Hey, this is Brock Lemire's Embedded Systems Design. We are looking at the I squared C bus or I squared C peripheral on the MSP430. And in this video, we're going to do an example program where we write one byte to an I squared C slave. This is the, the our task. We need to generate this message. So we are going to be talking to the Adafruit real-time clock uh, slave that we looked at in the last video. It has a hard-coded address, slave address of hex 68. And what we wanna do is we're just gonna write the data BB to it, okay? So we're gonna, as a master, we're gonna send a start bit, send the slave address and send a write signal. The slave will acknowledge us and then we'll write BB to it and then it will acknowledge it, and then as a master, we will stop. We'll set up the uh, the SCL or the clock rate to be 100 kilohertz, and we will use the B0 peripheral uh, on here. Here's my setup. Um, I have my MSP430, well, this is your setup too, so follow along. Here's the MSP430 launchpad board. Here are the pins for uh, peripheral B0 when configured in I squared C mode. And so you have clock and data coming out on port one, bit two and bit three. Bit two is clock. Uh, I have uh, the real time clock from Adafruit right here. It's flipped upside down so I can access the pins. And you notice that I've got the clock and data lines connected. And then I also am providing it power. I'm providing it 3.3 volts as power and ground. And then you, Right here, I have my little uh, cheap probes that I created in order to access clock and data, and I'm connecting them into the logic analyzer, and I wanna put clock on channel zero, and I wanna put data on channel one. And if you don't know how to do this connection, see the last video where we set this whole thing up. Okay, so now let's start looking at the code. Here is the block diagram of the I squared C system on the MSP430, and let's just quickly go over what we need to set up. Okay, so first of all, just like all the peripherals, we need to put this uh, B0 into software reset using the UC software reset bit in the uh, control word zero register. Then we're gonna set up the clock system. We are the master, so we generate the clock and we wanna get 100 kilohertz. So we're gonna need to choose SM clock and then put a, which is one megahertz, and then we'll divide it by 10 by dropping 10 into the bit rate word register. Then we need to set up the peripheral to be I squared C. So UC mode is gonna be I squared C mode. We're gonna put it UC master. We're gonna assert that to be the master. UC TR, which is the transmit bit. We want it in transmit, which means we're gonna write. And then the I squared C slave address is gonna be 68. And so though all like the last two of these, write and 68, those are going to be automatically shifted out right after a start bit is generated for us. So we have to preload those up before we start a message. Okay, now how are we going to handle data transmission? We are going to use the byte counter, which is TB count, and the uh, automatic stop bit generation, okay? And in conjunction, what these do is if you turn on this automatic stop bit, so uh, ASTP, it will generate the stop bit as soon as you have sent the number of bytes that are listed in the count register. So for our example, if we assert uh, automatic stop, and we put one into TB count, as soon as the master sends the one byte of information, the stop bit will automatically be sent. Okay, so that's how we're gonna handle uh, the generation. Now, after we configure the peripheral, we need to, of course, choose the port function select bits in order to send the I squared C out of uh, the B0 pins instead of the port one bits. And we take it out of software reset, and now we start to think about how are we actually gonna start the message. So we're gonna manually start it in the main loop. So we will actually just assert the TXSTT bit in the, in the control word one register, and well, control word zero register, and then we'll just do a delay loop, okay? So we'll, we'll start the, the message, then we need to delay long enough for all the bits to be shifted out, okay? And then what's gonna happen is that as soon as I start it, the slave address is going to be sent out, it'll be shifted out, six, eight, then the right bit will be shifted out, and then the state machine will wait for an acknowledge from the slave. As soon as that acknowledge comes back, we will, it will trigger an interrupt, the transmit interrupt that tells us, hey, we're ready to put something in the transmit buffer to be shifted out. So the interrupt service routine associated with this transmit buffer is where we are going to simply assign hex BB 
into TX buff. Okay, so we need to write an interrupt service routine. And we need to enable it. The enable for this is TX IE zero. So the the least significant bit is is this interrupt we're after, and the vector is called EUSCI underscore V zero underscore vector. All right, so a lot of coding to do. So let's fire up CCS. So I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to create a new CCS project and we'll go ahead and we'll call this uh, C underscore I2C underscore TX1 master right one byte. Okay. And it's going to be uh, obviously a C program. I go ahead and finish that up. And now here I am and here's my code. Okay. So I go ahead and nuke that little buddy, nuke that comment header, and I'm ready to start coding. So first and foremost, let's uh, set up B0 for I2C. I wanna put it in, put in software reset. So I do that just like all the other peripherals by setting UC software reset in the UC B0 CTL W0 register. And I'm gonna bitwise set with a mask called UC software reset. And now stop for a second. Notice that this UCB0, that's how I'm setting up the B0 peripheral. So all the configuration registers are going to be UCB0. Okay. All right. So now I got that. Let's go ahead and choose our clock. So let's uh, choose SM clock. And then we will uh, divide or set prescaler scalar to 10. And we do this by doing the following. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go UCB0 CTLW0. And what I want to do is I'm going to bitwise set. And we're going to do a mask that's UC mode underscore three this time. And it, this is fine because if you look at this block diagram, what happens is that you can choose either SM clock here or SM clock here. We've never chose this one down here, the one one. So let's, let's do that this time. Uh, just to try out a, a couple new things. So we're going to do UC mode three, and then we need to set the prescaler. So that one is we just drop the integer 10 into uh, UC B0 bit rate word control register. And we just say that that's 10. Okay. All right. So we look at this thing and we're like, all right, so we have what's in software reset. We did the UC control word zero, UC mode UC, uh, not mode, UC SSEL3. <laughs> and then the bit rate word is zero. Okay, so now here we come with a whole bunch of stuff. So I'll, I'm gonna do put into I2C mode. All right, so that's gonna be done in the U, oh, UCB0, CTL W0 register. And I'm gonna set a bit, this is one, UC MODE underscore three. So that's going to put it into the I squared C mode. Mode zero, one, and two are spy, spy settings. UC mode three is the I squared C. All right, next statement is going to be uh, master. So set as master. We will be, the MSP430 will be the master. So I'm going to go into the UCB0 CTLW0 register again, and I'm going to set the bit that is called UCMST. Now, you might, if you're not knowing where these masks are coming from, these are all coming from the header file. So if you dig through that header file, you'll see all these set up for us. Next thing I'm going to do is put into TX mode, and that means we're going to write. Okay, so they, they interchange write, read, write, and... Uh, transmit receive. So uh, the user's guide has transmit, but we're going to do it right. So we're going to do a UCB0, CTLW0. So it's in the same configuration register. And I'm going to bitwise or it with a mask called UCTR. Okay, so that's for transmit, transmit, receive, or transmit. Okay, so that's now it's in master mode. And this is cool. And now we're going to actually set the slave address. So I'm going to set slave address. And this is for the uh, real-time clock equals 0x68. So that's the hard-coded address of the real-time clock device that we got from the data sheet. So we go into UCB0, and this register is called I2C slave address. And I simply put in there 0x68, and I got it. Okay? All right, so I'm feeling pretty good here. Um, we've got it in transmit. These two lines right here are really key because 
they will automatically shift. Once I do the start bit, 68 will automatically be shifted out and then right will automatically be shifted out. Okay, so now let's do a couple more settings. So let's do the uh, auto, auto stop mode. And this is gonna be, it'll automatically generate the stop bit. This one is actually in the control word one register. So this is in UCB0 CTLW1. And I'm gonna set a bit mask with UCASTP underscore two. So it's mode two standing for binary one zero. Okay. All right. Uh, since we're in auto stop mode, we need to go into the UC, we need to do, uh, this is gonna be trans. Or, no, what is this? This is a transmit a TB count. Okay, transmit byte counter. Okay, so this is a count and equals one byte. Okay, so this is TB count, transmit byte. Okay, so I'm gonna go U B or U C B zero T B C N T transmit buffer count, and we'll go ahead and we're just gonna say equal to one. So we're gonna set one bit. Okay. All right. Okay, so that feels pretty good here. Uh, that's actually it for right now for the peripheral. So let's go ahead and now we're going to, we'll go set up the ports. I'm gonna go set up ports. And here what we gotta do is we need to set up, uh, we want P1 bit three is equal to SCL. And I'm gonna do that by going into the port one select one, and I'm going to clear bit three. Clear bit three. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll come right here, I'm gonna copy and paste, and I'm gonna say P1 select zero, and I wanna set bit three. <clears throat> okay, so that chooses the port one bit three pin is now gonna be used as I squared C clock. And now what I'm gonna do is set the data, and I'm gonna copy and paste this entire thing. And what I want to do is it's still port one select one and zero, and I want to go to port one bit two, and this is going to be SDA for data, and all I need to change is this to port two. So now that sets up my two ports, and the last thing to configure the ports, I need to turn on the I.O. system. So go power module five control zero register, and I'm going to clear the lock low power mode low power mode five bit. So this is gonna turn on IO. All right, so I got that. Now I'm ready to take this out of reset. So let's go up and copy this, this line right there. And I'm gonna say, I wanna take this out of reset by clearing this bit now. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bitwise and it with an invert of the mask. And this will take uh, B0 out of software reset. Okay. So now I'm feeling good and it's all ready to go. So now we, we're gonna do some interrupts here. So I need to enable B0TX0 IRQ. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go UCB0 IE, and then that's the register name. And then I'm gonna bitwise set. So I'm gonna bitwise with a mask to set this bit. UCTX IE0. Now remember, this is a local enable for TX zero. Now it's TX zero, it's not just TX, because remember there's like a ton of different interrupts with the I squared C. So the main one that we want is just uh, this interrupt that fires when the transmit buffer is ready to be written to. Now of course this is a maskable interrupt, so you need to do enable, interrupt, and hopefully that'll turn purple here if I get the syntax right. So then enable maskables. Okay, all right, so now that's ready to go. And we're ready to go into the main loop. So this is kind of interesting. So think about this. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna do a while loop that goes forever. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the transmit start bit. So I'm gonna go into UCB0, CTLW0, and I am gonna set this bit, UCTX, uh, TX, STT. So this is manually start, message and this is the start bit okay <clears throat> when this executes it will start a message and the peripheral will start going and so what it'll do is it'll then go pump out the slave address pump out the write bit wait for an acknowledge and it will then trigger the transmit interrupt 
and go down into the interrupt service routine. That's where we will stuff information into the transmit buffer. After that's done, the uh, slave will acknowledge. And then since we've sent our one byte, the transmit buffer is been satisfied at one and the automatic stop bit will, will be triggered. So now let's just put a delay loop. So let's go for i is equal to zero, uh, i is less than 100, we'll, it'll be pretty quick. And then i, we'll just do i equals i plus one this time. And we're doing nothing, but this is just a delay. So delay. And now since I created this uh, for loop as a delay, I gotta make sure I have i declared. <clears throat> okay, and so now we're sitting here and it's like, well, that's my main loop. So the only other thing left to do is to actually write the interrupt service routine. So let's come down here and let's do that. So I'm gonna come right here and I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna go, all right, here's my ISRs. And I go to the compiler, I say, excuse me, pregma, I would like to set up the interrupt vector for this particular vector, E-U-S-C-I underscore B zero underscore vector. The compiler says, what routine starting address would you like to put there? And I say the next one that comes. So I'm gonna go interrupt uh, void. And here is the name the name of the routine, E-U-S-C-I, and I'm making this up, B0 underscore I, I2C underscore ISR, and void. So now this is the routine right here. So that's gonna have a starting address that's put into this vector. And then this function right here says to the compiler, hey, return from this routine with an RETI, not just an RET. Here's the big thing. Once we get to this interrupt service routine, the peripheral has already sent out the start bit, the slave address, and the write bit, and the slave has acknowledged. So now this interrupt fires, and I come to here and I say, let's stuff something in the transmit buffer. So ucb 0 tx buff, and I am just gonna put in there our value that we wanna send. So we're just gonna send over and over bb. When we write to the transmit buffer, we clear the transmit, transmit zero flag. So this is all we have to do, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and fire this up, clean up some typos, and then see if this thing runs. All right, da, da, da. No way, no typos? <laughs> okay, cool. All right, so life is good. There it is. All right, so now what do, how are we gonna see if it works? Well, I'm gonna run it, okay? And now it's going. And supposedly it's working, but I can't see. So I'm gonna fire up the logic analyzer. So I bring up my logic analyzer. Uh, I'm using the waveforms tool that talks to my uh, analog discovery. And I'm gonna come down here to logic. And now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add some channels. Again, I squared C is one of the built-in uh, buses that is provided with waveforms. And I notice that I've got I squared C and the clock is on DIO zero and data is on DIO one. That happens to be how I connected it address is seven bits and it's gonna give it to me in hex. So I say, okay, and now watch this. Holy cow, look at what's going on. If I come over to the, and I hit protocol, all I have to do is say I squared C and it'll trigger when, I, when it sees the start bit. So now I'm gonna run and look at what is happening here. So if I zoom out a little bit, oh my gosh. <laughs> look at what I am seeing here. This is unreal. So I zoom way out, it's just pack it, pack it, pack it, pack it. Actually, it's not that, it's message, message, message. If I zoom in on this, let's see what I'm seeing. Look at this message. It sends the start bit, and if I zoom in more, I can see that, so it's start bit. What happens is if you you have, this is, across the screen is all you're measuring, so if it can't see the, the rest of the packet, it doesn't know how to decode it. So you have to have all the bits on the screen for the decoder to work. And so now take a look at this. There was a start bit, then it sent 68 as the slave address and it's sent right. This is the actual data that's being sent out. This is obviously uh, S clock or SCA, SCK. And then look what happens. This ACK came from the slave. That then prompted the master to say, oh, you're there? Here comes a big old fat BB. The slave says ACK and the master says, I'm done sending because I've already sent one byte, which was indicated in the transmit buffer. <laughs> Holy buckets. This is unbelievable. You just did I squared C. I will say one last thing. We know how this Adafruit uh, real-time clock works. We know that this is a junk packet <laughs> because we know that there's registers on the real-time clock. So what, the re what it's expecting is somebody to write to it an address of where you're gonna either read or write. 
it doesn't have an address that's BB. So this was just a way to get the Adafruit to, to send these acts back so we could actually see an I squared C packet. But you know what? You did it. Congratulations. That was your first I squared C program. As always, support my channel by subscribing and see ya.